I wanted to welcome all of you. This is really exciting. I love it when we have uh, to bring in extra chairs for our crowd. The theme for this one this time is basically focusing on law enforcement issues. But rather than focus on what law enforcement does, we're going to focus this one on who law enforcement is and their particular issues. And so our school resource officer is going to focus on their job and what they do and how that's helpful. But then we're going to focus on the officers themselves and the issues that first responders face in terms of the trauma that they have to deal with sometimes on an almost daily basis, whether you're veterans, whether you're um, medics, whether you're law enforcement, or firefighters. The trauma you deal with is just sometimes overwhelming to deal with and overwhelming to cope with and we want to help with those stressor factors. So we're really excited about the program that we're going to be presenting in that regard. We're really excited because we are now up to about 460 members. And that's part of why we've gone to themes because it helps you pick it, issues that you're really interested in if you want to come down in person. But we have a very active uh, group of um, chair of uh, committees, and I'm going to just read the names of the committees. Some of you I've talked to already are not on a particular committee. I urge you to think of a committee to join. Most, all the committees have cell phone capacity. Some of them still have in-person meetings, and they meet in between our meetings, uh, but we ask every one of them to have call-in capacity so you don't have to travel to Columbus again if you're not here. And so we have um, our um, First is our Aging Committee, Diversion and Reentry, Education and Stigma, which is a new one, Housing, Juvenile Justice, Law Enforcement, Psychiatry and Treatment, Policy and Legislation, Research and Best Practices, Specialized Dockets, and Veterans and Military Affairs. And you can join more than one committee. We have several people that are on several committees, but if you're interested in more than one issue, like you might be interested in juvenile and stigma in education, you could join both of those. And then we very strongly encourage cross-pollination between our committees. So if there's something you're working on that might require some legislation, some policy decisions, some rules, you know, pull in your, your uh, rules, your, your, um, your committee that works on, that would be research and best practices, we have legislation, our legislation committee. Think of other committees you can partner with. For example, we are going to be working on a program to train jail providers, uh, jail medical directors on psychotropic drugs and long-term injectables. We were successful in the last two years in getting two and a half million each year to reimburse jails for their psychotropic medications. In this next two year cycle, where we have another five million, two and a half per, we now will reimburse them for using the Medicaid formulary rather than the law, just the jail, the old fashioned jail one. And we will reimburse long-term injectables, which can really make a difference. I have a niece who's on long-term injectables, and I tell you, it has made a tremendous difference in her, her life because she is totally Medicaid non-compliant or medic medicine non-compliant. So think of, uh, so, so that is work, the specialized docket and the psychiatry and treatment committees are working together on that program. So those are opportunities. And then many of you have heard about Recovery Ohio. It's the governor's council that he put together to deal with all the issues around mental health and addiction and to give him a blueprint for uh, Ohio. I'm on that council, as some of you in this room are. We have met numerous times in the early part where we came up with a 75-point proposal uh, recommendation. Some of them are pretty broad. Some of them are very specific. And we have charged our subcommittees with taking those 75 recommendations and picking some, like picking number two and number six, or picking 12 and 15, because you can work on that. And then on the 18th of February, back here at, uh, at the uh, State Law Library, we are having a joint meeting of all of the co-chairs of our committees and the co-chairs of six working groups that the uh, uh, Recovery Ohio has put together, which are all internal agency cross-pollination uh, cross groups 
who are working on a lot of the same things because we want to be sure we collaborate and we work together. And so we think some really good things are going to come out of that meeting on February 18th, which is the co-chairs meeting of both groups. So, and then Stepping Up is still going strong. Uh, we have Rick Keller, who is with Pegs Foundation, and Tom Craig, who are the main uh, supporters for Pegs Foundation. We're in our fifth year now. We have visited probably 47 counties the first time and about 10 a second time. We're looking to add our final few counties. So if your county is not a Stepping Up County, please stop and see me, give me your card, tell me how I can kind of break into that county because we have so many things to offer them. For example, they're already benefiting from the psychotropic drug reimbursement, which came out of stepping up. And so those are things that, uh, but we have a lot of tools that we can offer them and a lot of opportunities. And we're going to be much more active about sending notices out through Carolyn Bevins and the AG Task Force on things like this. We're also sending them out through the Ohio Justice Alliance of Community Corrections, OJAC, so if you're a member there. And then it'll also be in our newsletter. If your county is a stepping up county, it'll be in our newsletter. So we're trying to be very, very proactive about getting this information out. And if you know of grants or trainings that are uh, available, that are free, particularly if they're free, we are, we're looking for really uh, opportunities, please let me know or let Carolyn Bevins know. Uh, <clears throat> and we want to be able to get these into all these different resources and get the information out and to help you out with that. Uh, so I wanted to just make sure I shared, shared that with you. Um, as I said, we are doing these um, in quarterly uh, opportunities. Oh, I wanted to introduce one more person. I recently had lunch with her. It's Judge Gina Russo who's with us, if you'd wave. And I'm particularly honing in on her because she has expressed an interest in the mental health court docket, so she's no longer safe from me. So uh, she took my uh, recommendation to come and, and make connections with all of you, but uh, I've been trying ever since I was a common pleas judge to get one started in Franklin County, and she's my best hope right now. <clears throat> so sooner or later, I'll outlive all of them, and I'll get it done. <laughs> so uh, as I said, we're starting to do these uh, on subject matters, and this time we're very excited about our program. I, I see our turnout is representative of the fact that a lot of you are interested in it as well. And I'm going to turn it over to Mark Porter to introduce all of the three topics and speakers. Mark is the co-chair of our law enforcement committee, and he's very modest. He doesn't like uh, anyone to talk about his resume or anything of, of that, he, but he's a director of law enforcement operations under uh, Attorney General Yost, but he was also in the, in the Secret Service, which we all think is really cool. So anyhow, thank you, and uh, we'll look forward to your presentation. The law enforcement committees, we're pleased to be here today. We have three presentations for you. Our first presentation is Enhancing School Safety using a threat assessment model. Now ensuring uh, the safety of our schools uh, involves multiple components, physical security, emergency management, but it should also include prevention efforts uh, in the form of a threat assessment process. This process begins with establishing a targeted violence prevention plan. Law enforcement training officer Micah Stoll from the AG's office will present. We've been working on this project for about nine months uh, uh, about six individuals at the AG's office, Micah, myself, as well as uh, Holly Hollingsworth, who is our Director of Communications. Holly, I'd like to just, uh, she's been an integral part uh, to this project. And um, so our project involves creating a training video for school resource officers, as well as school officials, uh, on how to establish threat assessment uh, capabilities within K through 12 schools, as well as higher ed. Our training video consists of 11 components and provides basic instructions for schools on creating a targeted violence prevention plan, the focus of which is to decrease the risk of students engaging in harm to themselves or the school community. So our training video lines up with recommendation number 28 uh, found in the prevention sector of the advisory council report. Uh, that recommendation states to recognize and strengthen the prevention role of law enforcement in schools. Uh, our second and third presentations today uh, line up with the Advisory Council's recommendation number 72, which states providing greater support for first responders. Executive Director of 
Mickey Inger will, will present on the first responders bridge. And finally, Commander Grizel of the Columbus Police Department will present on officer mental health and wellness and discuss CPD's newly created wellness bureau.